So I'll be talking about the mechanism of vision right now with you. Okay. So, well, what do you think? Is the neural system involved for you to visualize and perceive the sense of vision? Yes or no? Of course. Yes. The answer would be definitely yes. We've talked about the optic nerves, which connects the eye to the brain. So, of course, it would be involved. So, the light rays in visible wavelength, please note this word. We cannot perceive light for all wavelengths. The visible wavelength, let me see how many of you can answer what is the value in nanometers. The visible range rather. The visible range. Physics people who will be using this concept in biology. Come on, tell me. The range. I am not going to give you the answer. These are some easy questions. The range. In the meantime, think about it. In the meantime, I'll continue, okay? So, the light rays in the visible wavelength focused on retina. That is very important. Now comes about the topic, you know, optics in physics. If you try to see, if you have studied optics in physics, then you will understand how the light rays can pass through a type of a lens because the lens type will be important, convex or a concave lens, right? So, it will depend from where the light is coming, the source of the light, right? And that will decide where the image will be formed. Great. I love the chapter, you know, optics and physics. So I really love to, you know, do the ray diagrams. Very interesting. Great. A quite a similar, similar type of mechanism takes place in our eye also. Right? You see, when, when this wavelength of the lights, the visible wavelength, they fall on the retina, it would be able to generate potentials in rods and cones. Wow! The same concept. That is the reason why we have studied before we started studying eyes and the ears. Because the same mechanism is working over here. The potential, the potential will be generated and that is nothing but the signal for the brain and that is what the brain would be able to study and interpret and give us a suggestion. Fine? Okay. So it will generate the potentials in the rod and the cones. Generate potential means I am talking about the generation of impulse. Great. So yes, object, the light rays are coming up into the lens, into your eyes. And you know how much light should be allowed is decided by movement of your pupils. Pupil. It will go and when it merges on the retina, then, then it, we will be able to see. Fine. In physics, you know, you will be able, you would be studying. When you will be studying human eye in terms of physics, then you will study about various defects of vision. It's a very interesting thing. You would be able to understand some people cannot see objects which are placed very far. Some people cannot read newspapers. That means objects which are nearer to the eyes. There are various types of vision occurring because of various disorders or various problems in the eye. Right? And they can be rectified. With the help of lens, with the help of specs, and how it is rectified, you'll be able to understand. Wait for the chapter in physics. Well, great. So, image on the retina, but we need the brain to perceive it. Don't forget that. Well, so now bright light, the pupil will constrict because they don't want our eyes need do not need so much of light. It can cause problems, in fact. You know, it is always recommended you should not look at the sun directly because it's too much of light. Yes? So, bright light, pupil constricted by the action of the iris muscles, constricted, it becomes smaller. So, it can, you know, regulate or it can decide how much light it can allow to enter. Dim light, of course, that means amount of light coming is quite low. So, so, what will happen? It will try to get more of those light rays or the beams, as you can call. So it will have, it will open up. So dim light, pupil dilate by the action of iris muscles. See here. Pupil constricted, pupil dilated. Fine. Got it? So this is how the amount of light entering the eye is monitored. And you know, you know, this is the same mechanism we have used to develop the cameras.
Now talking about the photopigments, the rhodopsin, please note, this is basically opsin plus, opsin, the protein plus the retinal, that is the aldehyde of vitamin A. Wow. So rhodopsin, it's opsin, the protein plus the aldehyde of vitamin A, which is nothing but retinal. Let's see how, what is the mechanism of vision? You know, when there is light, don't, don't get panicked about so much on the screen. I'll break it. So, this is the rhodopsin. See, retinal plus opsin. Now, when there is light, you know what will happen? It will result into the dissociation of this retinal. See, it is dissociated. That means now opsin is free. It is free so it can undergo structural changes. So, rhodopsin, opsin plus retinal. If there is light, light will result into the dissociation of the retinal from opsin. So, now opsin is free to undergo structural changes. If opsin undergoes structural changes, what will happen? It will result into the permeability changes of the membrane. So, when opsin undergoes the structural changes, it will result into the permeability changes in the membrane. So, what will happen? Okay. If the permeability changes, that means the, it will allow the movement of the ions. If it allows the movement of the ions, can I say, just try to recall whatever we have studied in the last session, okay, last two sessions, the conduction of the neural impulse, how the stimulus was generating a change in potential difference, the voltage. Yes, all these things will be happening over here. It's simply, I can just put it simply, it's the change in potential difference which will happen. Why? Because of the change in permeability of the membrane, which will result into the movement of the ions. If the ions are moving, that means potential difference will be changing. So, this will result into a potential difference change in the photoreceptor cells. This is nothing but the generation of the action potential in the ganglion cells through the bipolar cells. Fine? Great. Now what will happen? This action potential, yes, remember optic nerves, this action potential, the impulse basically will be transmitted by the optic nerves to where? The brain, the visual cortex area of the brain where the neural impulse, they will be analyzed. They will be analyzed. You know, the image which was formed on the retina will now be interpreted. They will be recognized based on the past memory and experience. Let me tell you once again, so that the story is much more relatable for you. This is important. So rhodopsin, simple. It is opsin plus retinal. Now, when there is light, it causes the dissociation of retinal from opsin. Now, opsin is free. It can undergo structural changes. If there is a structural change happening, it would result into the change in permeability of the membrane. Permeability of the membrane changes and if permeability of the membrane is changing, that means it will allow the movement of the ions. If ions are moving, of course, a potential difference will be generated. There will be a change in the potential difference happening. Of course, movement of the ions. This means an action potential will be generated as we have studied already in the past two sessions. Right? Action potential, the impulse will be generated. Right? See here, the impulse will be generated. So this will produce a signal that generates action potentials in the ganglion cells through the bipolar cells. Now from here, the optic nerves will take these impulse, the action potential will be transmitted by the optic nerves to the brain, where the visual cortex of the brain. Here, this image which was formed on the retina will be interpreted Recognized based on the past memory and experience. Beautiful mechanism, right? Great.